always loved wire baskets. What I haven't always loved is the cost. So I'm gonna show you today how to make your own DIY wire baskets at a fraction of the cost. Just what you would take to purchase some hardware cloth and a little bit of wire. A roll of hardware cloth at the hardware store usually costs between $15 or so, and uh, you can even find it for less than that. Um, and you can get them in varying sizes and varying types. So the one I prefer right now that I'm using for this particular project today has slightly larger squares, um, and you can find them in smaller squares, you can find them chicken wire style, um, whatever your preference is. And you can get usually between three to four medium to large baskets out of them. So at that price and the cost, of course, just to buy your wire, uh, that's a pretty good deal. And just for a few dollars, you can find this usually in the picture hanging um, department of your store. And uh, this is just, you know, uh, frame hanging wire that you'll be using as well. Now the other tools that you'll need are some pliers, uh, some wire cutters, a straight edge, and optionally, if you decide you don't like the color um, of the baskets in its natural um, silvery hue here, is you can go ahead and find some spray paint. All right, let's get started. To get started, you're gonna to wanna to cut out um, what you want the base of your basket size to be. So right now I have one that's about nine squares by 11 squares, and this is the size I want the bottom of my basket to be. And then, as you can see, I've already cut out another piece here. Um, so I'm sticking with the same general size. Um, but then you're gonna to wanna to determine the height of your basket. So, you know, here's my base. And um, whatever height you want, you're gonna to wanna to give yourself maybe two extra squares in addition. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and find out how many, uh, what the perimeter of this is. And that's how long you're gonna to wanna to make sure your piece is so that this can wrap all the way around the perimeter of this square. So let's get cutting. The hardest part of this job is gonna to be to cut out your wire. Um, sometimes you're left with loose edges that can scratch you. So if you'd like to wear some gloves, I recommend doing that or just be very careful as you do it. It's also sometimes helpful to have an extra pair of hands, but since I don't have that today, I'll go ahead and do this on my own. Now, when you cut each piece, as you go along, you wanna make sure that you get as close and as flush to, um, to this uh, spine of the wire as possible. You don't want too many harsh edges sticking out, otherwise they can scratch you. Now that I've cut out the two pieces that I need to make my basket, my base, and the sides of the basket, and it was determined again by the perimeter of the base as far as the length of it, and then the height of it, I determine just kind of by eyeballing what I want. Now remember, you're gonna to wanna to give yourself a couple extra squares at the top um, for your height, and then as far as the length, sometimes it's better to give yourself a few extra squares as well, because in the process, sometimes you might find that you need a little extra wiggle room. Remember how I said you'll wanna have two extra squares at the top? Well, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those two extra squares and we're just gonna create a little sturdier of a, a top or a perimeter for a basket by bending that over. So go ahead and take your straight edge, line it up with, um, with one of the spines, uh, the second square down, and we're gonna carefully and slowly take the time to bend each one just a little bit until we can get it where it's bent enough to bend it completely over so that it's flush with the face of the rest of the, of the basket. Once you've got your wire bent sufficiently so that it's flush with the other side, you can then use your pliers to go ahead and kind of crimp the edges a little bit, allowing for it to make sure that it lays flush with um, the rest of the wire and also kind of needs, creates a neat design. So I'm going to start by placing my base right alongside the length of what's going to be the sides of my basket and I'm going to just put the two of them flush to each other and make sure all the spines line up. And then I'm going to uh, start by putting the wire here and just um, kind of wrapping it around itself so that I can then um, have some room to weave in between in and out uh, of these spines. So before I do that, also make sure that your wire is long enough to be able to go around the entire perimeter. Now, if it isn't, that's okay. Um, you can always get some more. 
but take the time first to you know try to straighten it out as best as possible so it doesn't end up having any kinks in it Now, doing this might be a little bit difficult at first simply because you're dealing with such a large long wire and it can be so easily um, caught in kinks or twisted around so as long as you make sure that you keep it straight as much as possible and that you don't miss any squares what we're doing now is we're looping it through each square one time and twist around and then we're going to pull it taut and again sometimes it likes to get caught up in each other so just move slowly and you'll be fine and as you go along and go through like i said make sure you pull it tight and make sure that each of the spines are as close to lined up as you can get them now that we've got our base attached to our side by our first little sewing or weaving area here then we're going to want to go ahead and use again our straight edge and put it along the spine of uh, this one piece of wire that lines up with the base here where we left off on our on our weaving and we're going to use that just to create a crease or a bend once again that will help us um, make the next side to our basket and once we've done that and remember that as you go along you're going to really want to try to uh, just carefully help the basket um, straighten out a little bit wherever it can then we'll have the next side and we're going to continue our weaving around this corner now. Okay, so I've woven across the second base here and we're going to do the same thing we did the first one again. We're going to just take our straight edge and use that to help us make the next curvature in our basket. And now I'm going to weave along that base and so on and so forth until I reach the very edge. I've just finished weaving the final side of my basket and I have a little extra to go up the side here. But before I do that, I can see that I have extra that I had just in case I needed to have a little extra here. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut off any extra, any excess that I don't need. Now, if you've discovered that the two um, spines are not going to quite meet up for you, don't panic, that's okay. What you're going to do is you're going to cut off one of the extras and then use your straight edge to bend over and overlap this last little segment so that it bends over onto the one side and then you're going to finish sewing up the seam of that. I've come to the end and as you can see I have just a little bit left so I'm going to go ahead and take that and probably won't use all of it, but a little bit of it, just to make sure that I can wrap around uh, the wire edges and um, even create a little bit of a knot, uh, just to make sure that it stays on there and doesn't come loose. Then I'm gonna cut the excess and wrap that around to make sure that no sharp edges are sticking out. Now that you've completed your basket, there's a whole myriad of possibilities of things you could do with it. You could create a fabric liner to go on the inside. You could cut out a piece of wood to go across the area of the base, depending on what you want to store in your basket. Maybe you don't want to have the holes at the bottom. You could spray paint it. You could create handles for it. And I'll show you how I created a little leather handle for mine um, on the blog. And I'll also be sure to share a few tips that just helps finesse the process because as you go along, you might run into a couple little kinks or maybe it won't be as professional the first time you do it as you would like it to be. So I wanna make sure I share all the tips with you so that you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made the first time and get your best product with each little bit of hardware cloth that you have. So visit my blog, Homemade by Carmona, for all of those tips. And I'll make sure to include a link here and follow that and find out more.